analytically. It's still analytically because we're focusing mostly on the functions. Um, day three. So we've talked about this idea behind F sub T being the position S prime of T, which is also known as V of T, is the velocity. We've talked about what velocity means as well. And then we introduced the idea that the second derivative of position, which is the derivative of velocity, or as we can define it as A of T, is acceleration. In other words, the, the rate of change of velocity with respect to time is acceleration. So that's what acceleration is. Acceleration is the rate at which velocity is changing. So how fast? So when you feel that velocity, the idea is that you're not, you know, if you're just going at a constant velocity, when you're on a train, for example, or on, you know, you don't, it doesn't even feel like you're moving because you don't feel that, you know, that, that force. Um, because you're going at constant velocity. Now, when you take off, be it a roller coaster, be it a plane, be it even in a car, you kind of feel it. And that's because you're, you are accelerating. Um, and because you're accelerating, you're, um, you're changing your velocity. And, and that's kind of like that. That's what you feel. There is also um, something that we refer to as there is an application for the derivative of the acceleration. Um, it actually has the name called jerk. It's called it's called a jerk. You know, like that. That is that jerk because when you change the acceleration, when your acceleration changes, um, that causes that type of jerk. So it, it's not just that you feel it, but then you also jerk forward or jerk back. Um, it's not a concept in AP calculus that we need to that we that's on the exam, nor is it something that we're going to cover. But just so you know. So, velocity is, is basically the direction of movement. So, if V of t is greater than zero, then of course we are moving forward. If V of T is less than zero, we're moving backwards. And also if V of T is equal to zero, then we are at rest. Acceleration is like the wind. direction so the, it is it is like the wind in terms of the the analogies that I'm going to be making all right so if a of t is greater than zero then the wind is pushing to the to forwards pushing forward a of t is less than zero, then it is pushing backwards. Now, just because something is pushing forward doesn't mean you're moving forward. Um, so if you've ever walked um, in a windy day um, and the wind is at your face, that you, you can walk against the wind, all right? So you can walk against the wind, and you can also walk with the wind. Um, it's a lot easier to walk with the wind behind you to your back, and you can, you know, if 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 something was the case, you would actually start, you know, going faster and faster. And we're going to talk about that idea. We also donated um, speed. We noted that speed is the absolute value of velocity, and that's something that we're going to be talking about different. One of the major concepts that we have is this idea behind speed, where speed is the absolute value of velocity.
But more importantly, we are going to be asking the questions, when is a particle speeding up versus slowing down? And that is our big question of today. Okay, when is speed? Now, there's a lot of students who make a lot of mistakes on this because they don't take the time to practice to learn it. All right, and when we talk about a particle speeding up versus slowing down, acceleration alone does not determine. speed up slash down. A lot of people will think, oh, the acceleration is positive, so speeding up. Oh, the acceleration is negative, slowing down. That will give you a quick zero, all right? It's gonna give you no credit. Um, it is the most common mistake that students make, and we know that students really haven't taken the time to understand the concept if all they do is acceleration. Instead, speeding up slash down. We can also say this is, um, we might say speed increasing or decreasing. We can also, we might say that speed is increasing or decreasing is a combination of velocity and acceleration. So when you hear speed increasing, decreasing, okay, change of speed, when you hear change of speed, you should be thinking both velocity and acceleration. When we talk about moving forward or moving backwards, you should be thinking of the velocity sign, velocity being positive or negative. With speed, we need to know both of them, okay? so. Um, now, also of importance, just like as with moving forward slash backwards, the values of V of T and A of T only need to be known in terms of their sign, positive or negative. So it's not that we don't care. We're, we're not going to be worried too much in our course. The unless we are literally interpreting the the the, the values. Sometimes we do that. Um, the velocity is five. For our, more, for our purposes, the, what's more important is that the velocity is positive. At this value, velocity is positive. At this value, velocity is negative. At this value, acceleration is positive. That's what's going to be of most importance. Questions before I, I move on. Now, well, you can speak up if you have a question. I'm just going to kind of talk a little bit. Um, same thing in terms of the, the types of questions. You might get a question that just asks you that at a point, at, X, at t equals 5, what is happening? Are we moving forward? Is speed increasing or decreasing? We can ask these questions. What is the acceleration? And at times, I can also ask you, like yesterday, what is the intervals that this happens? So sometimes you're just asking what happens at a singular point, no sign chart needed. And sometimes we are asked about over what intervals, when this occurs. And that means not only sign, it means sign charts. And I said, yes, charts. So I like to think of this diagram here.
we could think of what happens when velocity is greater than zero and when velocity is less than zero. So if you're a little person here, if velocity is less than zero, you're walking backwards. Velocity is greater than zero, you're walking forwards. All right, so the velocity, the sign of velocity tells you in which direction the particle or person, however you want to think about what, is the, what does it mean by a particle. Particle could mean a person, a car. And then we have acceleration being greater than zero or acceleration being less than zero. So if acceleration is positive, that means the wind is pushing you to the, to the right. And if the velocity acceleration is negative, that means the wind is pushing to the left. Now, let's look at the box one, the top left box. If you are moving into the right direction, if you're moving forward and the wind is pushing you forward, what is happening to your speed? If you're walking forward, and the wind is pushing you in the back, what happens to your speed? What happens to your movement? Just think about real world. Increases speed? Yeah, you're gonna get faster, right? You're gonna, your speed is gonna increase, so you get speed increasing, speeding up. All right, what happens is go to bottom left. What happens if, if you are moving to the left, you're moving backwards, but the wind is pushing you forwards to the right. What is happening to your speed? It's a decrease, yeah. Decreases. Perfect, speed decreases. And we also could also say the thing of slowing down. All right, it's, it's perfectly, speed decreasing, speeding down. We don't really say speed down. We usually say slowing down, just to, in terms of making a better applicational word. Um, top right, you're moving to the right and the wind is moving you to the left. Decrease. And you're moving to the left, but acceleration is pushing you to the left. Increase, speed increase. We're speeding up, yes. So pay attention in terms of like, for example, um, in the bottom right, that's the big one. You could be, acceleration is negative, but the speed is increasing. So let's, let's come up with a rule. Speed is increasing when what? So we have two instances here. We have speed increasing here and speed increasing here. What can you tell me that is the same? What's common between these two? If I had to put these in, in, in a context, when is speed, when, when do we have instances of speed increasing? When you're going the same direction. When you're going the same direction. When what is? When you're, that's too much of a pronoun. What does that mean? Pronouns. You're not. You're, what is that? When your speed and when your velocity and acceleration are going in the same direction. There you go. Mm -hmm. So what what I was saying, Jatasha, is that you 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 need to refer to what you're referring to being the mm -hmm. same. So when velocity and acceleration, and we're in the same, same, same direction. We're gonna say are the same sign. So if they're both positive or both negative, velocity and acceleration, more important. It's very important that we be very specific there because if you just said 
um, they are the same sign, and that's all you say, you'll get zero credit for the response. When is speed decreasing? The other two scenarios. When your acceleration and velocity are opposite signs. When V of T and A of T are opposite signs. So when when they are and that's then that's the answer. So as such we need to we're going to need to um, identify and look at sign charts for both V of T and A of T are needed. So in the problems that you did yesterday, you had to create a sign chart for velocity. And then you were able, once you do that and you create them, it just becomes reading the sign chart to determine when a particle is at rest, when it stopped, when it changed, or when it's rest that stopped, when it changes direction, and when that particle is moving forward or moving backwards. And the only thing you need to look at is the velocity sign chart. Now, when you get the excel, when you're talking about um, speeding up or slowing down, you also need that velocity sign chart, but you also need, you will, in, in addition, you need to also look at the acceleration and how it compares And so what I mean by comparing here is that you're going to create a sign chart like for V of T. And it might be like 1 and 2. And yesterday I wrote the word positive and negatives. Um, but I like to just, we're going to, it's, it's a lot more helpful to actually sometimes just write it like here. So that's the sign chart for velocity. So we know we're moving backwards and then and here's like 0, right? Or here's 0. We're moving forward up to t equals 1, then we're moving backwards to t equals 2, and then we continue to move backwards then on. All right. So if, if, if this was that one, that's how we would do it. And then we need to look at a sign chart for acceleration. And the sign chart for here is like positive and then negative, and here's zero. You want to make sure these number lines overlap with 1.5 being between 1 and 2. It is important on these ones. And if when we do these ones, what we're going to do is we're going to overlap them. We want to compare. So we use both of these zeros for or all of the zeros for acceleration and velocity. And what I done in velocity, there was only two intervals. Or sorry, there was three intervals for velocity: zero to one, one to two, two to infinity. For acceleration, there's two intervals. Right, zero to one point five and one point five to infinity. So I'm just I'm gonna just redo what I just did. No, I'm, I know I erased it, but that was just so that we can look at it. So now I'm gonna be looking at all. Oh, so now my new one has one, two, three, four intervals: zero to one, one to one point five, one point five to two, and two to infinity. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna ask ourselves: Are the signs the same? Or are the signs opposite? In my first interval from zero to one, are the signs for velocity and acceleration the same or opposite? Same. Same. And a trick that's gonna happen is always gonna alternate. 
You can't go same, same. It's impossible. Not with a continuous function. So it will always change to the other one if you've broken down the intervals correctly and overlapped them. So from 0 to 1, they were the same. From 1 to 1.5, are the signs the same or opposite? Opposite. The next interval, 1.5 to 2? Same. And 2 to infinity? Same. Oh, actually, they are the same on that one. Okay, actually, that's a bad example. Let me let me change let me change this to plus 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 plus. Sorry, let me change that to plus 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 right there. Sorry, um, they are opposite. Sorry, I had to change that to pluses. Um, that situation wouldn't happen if if velocity does go negative to negative if it goes negative negative then what will happen is that acceleration will also end up with a critical point at time equals two and therefore acceleration would have changed so if 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 velocity goes from forward negative to negative um what that means is that it had to slow down to get to zero and then it had to speed back up to go away from zero. So think about it. If if you're moving backwards and then you go to rest conceptually in the, in the world of physics, to go from moving backwards to, to stopping, you have to slow down. And then to go from stopping to continue moving backwards, you have to speed back up. So that's why I said there'll never be an instance where the velocity and acceleration will will not alternate. It'll always be same, opposite, same, opposite, or opposite, same, opposite, same. And so, you know, and this is a this is not like this is more of a an example. Um, we would say speed is increasing from zero to one union one point five to two. And we would say speed is decreasing from 1 to 1.5 union 2 to infinity. And the reason behind these is because v of t and a of t, same sign. And over here, because v of t and a of t opposite signs. Please note must explicitly note signage in justification. Sign chart alone does not justify an AP calc. I kind of find this kind of dumb, but this is how the grading scoring works. Like, why are speed increasing and decreasing? Well, look at my sign chart. Like, it's there. I showed you the velocity sign chart. I showed you the acceleration sign chart. And I noted that same and opposites. I have that there. But a sign chart in AP Calculus does not. You have to interpret what that sign chart is saying. And, and then there's a lot of good reasoning behind this because there are a lot of individuals who, who are answering the question that they don't even know why they are doing it. They just have pluses and minuses on there for some reason. Um, and then they're trying to make a, an answer and they don't really know what they're even referring to. Now, to make the sign chart for acceleration, making a sign chart of acceleration is the same as making the sign chart for velocity. In your homework tonight, you will get answered questions that are like yesterday's homework. Moving forward, moving backwards. All right, I am going to ask those same questions. Some questions I'll only ask you about at a time and point. So let's let's do an example. We're going to do an example where I'm just going to ask you at one specific point what is happening and then another question I'm going to ask you about what are the intervals. Just like last night's homework, I might start off by giving you the position function s of t or I might start off by giving you the velocity right off the back 
And remember, you always need to use velocity in these questions because it's calculus. Velocity is a derivative function. It's a rate of change function. So we're always going to use it. And then if the question is asking about speed increasing or decreasing, then we have to do that. Now, I also want to note that if the question was asking stuff like, when is velocity increasing? Well, we would look at the sign of acceleration, but I don't want, I, you know, that's what we would do. I don't, I think I deleted that question because that's more of something that we're going to do in our next unit. All right, so let's do an example. S of t equals t plus 3 times 4 minus t for t greater than or equal to 0. A. And we'll go actually to B. We'll go directly to the final question. Is speed increasing or decreasing at time equals 3? Justify. Okay. And I don't even know why it's, it's not even a part A. It's a, that, is the, that is the question right there. Sorry. It could be a two point. I could have asked you part A, and this happens on the AP exam. Part A um, is the particle moving forward or backwards at time equals 3. And basically, we're going to answer, we're going to have to answer that question in order to answer this question. And then the next part follow up is about the speed. So that's a typical question. They ask you about movement first, forward or backwards, and then they ask you about speed. So when I see this, speed increasing and decreasing, I need to think about signs of V of T and A of T, okay? More, and actually more specifically, V of three and A of three. I need to know what is velocity at three and I need to know what is acceleration. I need to know at time equals three is my particle moving forward or backwards and at time equals three is the wind pushing forward or backwards. So what am I going to do first in solving this problem? For the top, it is S of T equals T plus 3 parentheses times do we have to expand it? Yeah, I probably want to expand it, but why? So for why? after we expand it, we can take the derivative to yeah. find the velocity. Exactly. We want to find the velocity. We want to take the derivative. Now, I don't, I don't have to expand it, but with something that's a simple um, quadratic like this, we probably it'll be much to our ease to expand first and then um, take our derivatives. So. I'm going to rewrite S of T to make my derivative easier. This gives me um, 4T minus 3T plus 12 minus T squared. So S of T is equal to T plus 12 minus T squared. Okay. And as Ariana said, I'm going to find V of T, which remember is the derivative. And what's my derivative? Negative 2t plus 1. I would like, yeah, 1 minus 2t. Okay. Now, I don't have to make a whole sign chart on this problem because I only need to know at time equals 3. All right. I only need to know at time equals 3. So I'm going to find v of 3. Now, how do I find V of 3? Technology is more than applicable. You can do this by hand, though, on this problem. That's 1 minus 2 times 3, which gives me negative 5. So V of 3 was negative 5, which, of course, is less than 0. It's negative. That's what I care about. Next thing, what am I going to do? Take the derivative from the velocity. Because that's acceleration.
which is? Negative 2. Negative 2, it's a constant. So when I'm trying to find a of 3, a of 3 is just negative 2. There's no nothing to plug in. It's just negative 2, which is less than 0. So now the question is, there should be a 3 right there. Is acceleration, or sorry, is speed increasing or decreasing at time equals 3? Increasing. Speed is increasing at t equals 3 because the velocity and acceleration have the same signs. Now, I also want to note that I'm able to say the words same sign because I found and showed what those signs are. I showed my work of why velocity, and I stated that it's negative, they're both negative, negative five and negative two. If I didn't find the actual values and I just tried to guess, you know, technically you would have like a one in four shot increasing because the same sign, you know, if you said something like that, Usually we wouldn't accept it because I need to know well, which one's which sign positive or negative That's just to be careful. Just in other words actually show your work Don't just try to totally guess it. So this was a question that I this is how I solve a question when I just asked for a specific point in time All right, let's do another example now let's do let's do a tougher example V of t is equal to t minus 1 squared times t minus 6. I'll give you one like this. I'm just wondering if I want to do the square or not. Pause. I want to check my homework. And t is greater than or equal to zero. A. When is the particle moving forward? Now I could ask you for all of them. I could say moving forward, backwards, you know, rest. I can ask you all those same questions. But for to keep things a little bit down, I'm just gonna ask just for forward with a justify. And then question B is going to be, when is the particle slowing down? With a justify. So those are the two questions, all right? In your homework, sometimes I just ask you just like, just the one, sometimes I say moving forward, backwards, rest, change direction. You know, same thing with down here. Now, to answer about moving forward or backwards, I need to do what? I need to find first when what? What do I have to f first figure out? Like the t equals something? I have to figure the t equals something. Why? What are those called? Those are called, is it position? I don't, mm. So I first, I don't think, I first need to figure out when velocity is at rest. Um, these are called the critical points. Okay. Which I haven't technically used for the word for critical points, but I need to figure out when velocity is at rest. In order to figure out when, I, and, and more importantly, I need to make a sign chart. That's what I need to know. I need to make a sign chart. And in order to make a sign chart, I need to find out the zeros. Okay? So I'm gonna set velocity equal to zero, so I get t minus one squared times t minus six equal to zero. Okay? And this gives me t equals what? Right, so to do this, I set each one equal to each 
factored using the zero product property. T minus one squared equal to zero. T minus six equal to zero. This gives me T equals one and t equals six, okay? Now, I know you're seeing that squared. What does that squared mean? If, if you have done function analysis, if you, did the, if you had come to the summer program, this, this summer program this summer, what that tells you that when we make our sign chart, um, that's a multiplicity of two. So visually, that's gonna be a bounce. Um, and, but that's not something I wanna teach overall the class. We're just gonna use technology. So I'm going to make a sign chart. I'm going to label where zero is because my interval doesn't start until zero. Um, and then I have one and six. And I'm really just kind of indicating where zero is. I'm not making that up. It's, I want to put the one and six. And this is for my velocity. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to pick points. All right. Um, once again, just, just like I told you how. Um, if you've done this material, you can you can actually if you've done sign analysis, then we know the far right interval will be positive because the leading coefficient is positive, and then we know it's going to change signs at six, and then we know it's not going to change signs at one. This is a much bigger pre-calculus concept, and like I said, um, for our purposes, we're just going to pick values. So we're going to use technology. So for example, I'm going to pick a value here. I'm going to find V of 2. I'll find over here. I might do like V of 7, and I'm going to do V of 0. All right. Now, when I find these values, when I plug these numbers in, I'm going to get, and you can just plug it in however you want to. You can do it by hand. You can use technology, a graphing calculator. You can use Desmos. We only have five minutes, so I'm just going to say what happens. For right over here, um, we get a negative. For V of 2, we get a negative. And V of 7, we get a positive. So I get pluses here, minus here, with being zeros, and then plus or sorry, minus is there. So, when is the particle moving forward? Six to positive infinity. Because V of T is? Greater than zero. And that's my answer. And that is my work. Just use the plug-in method, all right? I just want you to guys to use the plug-in method. Um, if you have, like I said, if you have the background, then if we were actually going to look at what this graph looked like, the graph would look like this. It would come back down. It would bounce off, and it would go right there. That's what the graph would look like. If you, I, I don't believe your pre-calculus math three courses were able to get really into how to sketch these, um, utilizing the, the information such as the leading coefficients and multiplicity. Um, and and we, we, to get around that and get around the short year of material time, um, just plug in numbers. Just, I don't care what the graph looks like. Just care what the signs are. Is the particle slowing? When is the particle slowing down? Ah, I need to find acceleration. Now, I did make this one a little bit harder. Um, it's a product rule, right? So the derivative would be, um, I could expand the whole thing, but I'm not. It's 2 t minus 1 times t minus 6 plus 1 times t minus 1 squared. So that's what the acceleration is. It's just a derivative of that using the product rule. Now, I did not give you a problem this hard because now we need to figure out when acceleration is equal to zero. All right. Um, in order to do this, um, what I can do here is I can factor out a t minus one. This has a t minus one and this has a t minus one. So I get a of t equals t minus one times what everything, what is left. What is left is a two times t minus six plus t minus one. I factored out a t minus one. I'm not making you do this tonight, but I want to at least show you an example so that if, for those of you who want to push your knowledge, you can do so. 
I factored out a t minus 1. This is t minus 1, and that becomes, when I combine them and I distribute them, it becomes 3t minus 13. I set that equal to 0. I can now set t minus 1 equal to 0. 3t minus 13 equal to 0. That gives me t equals 1. And I know it's ugly, but I get t equals 13 over 3. Okay. Now, when I make my sign chart, I like to go back and make my sign chart underneath the velocity. So what I'm going to do here is I'm actually going to swing my, my sign chart back up to the previous problem because I could do two things. I could copy down the velocity sign chart or just draw it underneath it. So I have the value of 1. I want to make that under 1. And 13 over 3 is like 4 point something, so it's right in the middle. The same thing, I'm going to plug in values. I'm going to plug in values like, oh, V of 0. Um, I'll plug in like V of 2, and I'll plug in like V of 5. Or sorry, A. Those are supposed to be accelerations. I know, I got one minute. A of 0, A of 2, A of 5. Um, a of two, a of zero is a positive. I plug that into into what my acceleration thing is in there, um, and then I get a negative, and then I get a positive. So I get plus 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 minus 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 plus plus plus. I overlap them. Right there is my first overlap, my next overlap, and my last overlap. And my first interval is opposites, then they're the same sign, then they're opposites, and then they're the same signs. This question is about slowing down, so am I looking for when the signs are opposite or the same? When they're opposite. When they're opposite. So what are my intervals? When 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 are the when are velocity and acceleration opposites? Here from zero to one and here, that little interval right there. Union thirteen over three to six. Because velocity and acceleration are opposite signs. I know that is a lot to tough to process. The main idea is that, and don't worry, the acceleration, this problem was only much more difficult because I gave you a more difficult acceleration problem. A lot of people always go, oh, you the example you gave in class was so much easier than the problem you gave on the homework or the 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 exam. I just the only I, I made this example so that you can see in finding the acceleration and finding the zeros, it could be complicated. This one will not be that complicated. As you can see, I, do, I am over already. Um, that's what I have for you. Your homework handout is in there. I actually made it much, much, much shorter than I have done in years past, okay? So it's gonna feel long, but it's actually way shorter. Do that work, push through today, so you can, tomorrow should be a lot easier, and that should also be able to have the time to conclude. So really push on completing this one into its completeness. It'll be benefit, and then we can get going. Make your way to CAS. See you tomorrow.